there are four high level types of data quality issues I like to think about. So one is your sort of database integrity issues. And this might be what most of you sort of traditionally think about when you think of, of data quality, like, oh, I'm missing a required field or I've got a bad data type or a bad value or, or, um, or, or, or something like, like that. Um, at, at the next kind of one is business logic issues. So things that aren't maybe you know, documented or managed technically within the database, database system, but you know, you um, have a policy, you know, have a reason that all employees must have a, you know, employee end date or something, or, um, you know, no one is allowed to submit a expense report for more than $10,000 or, or whatever, sort of, or, or other kind of business or functional rules uh, that, that you might have that may, you know, may be represented inside a data system, but or you're really defining and thinking about them from a business uh, standpoint. Um, uh, the next is a sort of a mismatch between systems. So uh, this is another thing that people identify kind of as issues. And notice I'm talking about issues here instead of rules. We'll kind of uh, talk about, you know, looking at things from an issue perspective versus a rules perspective and those different things. But um, so the mismatch between systems, that's, um, you know, if you've got, uh, you know, a, maybe a, a recruiting system and then your, your actual um, enterprise application and maybe you've got uh, people in both systems that are not, you know, that are unidentified duplicates or you have data that's out of date between those two systems. We're going to go, we're going to go into a little more detail on each one of those, but that's a, that's another kind of an issue uh, that there's nothing looking at any one of the, the systems on their own data doesn't appear to be a problem, but they're actually about to sync with each other. Uh, and then the last one is what I, call the perceived quality issues. And actually, I think that this is one of the most important things I want to focus on today. So uh, it's a current trust issue, you know, something that's identified by one of your users or someone, you know, someone who is consuming the, uh, your data or trying to use your, your data and they perceive a problem, and, but it has a yet to be determined cause, right? Um, TDB to determine before it costs. Um, so that is something to, um, uh, you know, to think about like, like what is causing causing this this issue. So we're going to talk about that a lot. So these are sort of the four high level like types of data quality issues that you might you might encounter. Uh, but all of these you know produce trust issues, and 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 trust is a is a thing I'll come back to a lot on on one of the big um, you know effects of of either real or perceived quality problems is that people don't trust your data. If they don't trust your data, they're not going to be able to make decisions. They're not going to um, use the data. Uh, it, it just undermines everything you're trying to do with the data-driven uh, culture. Um, all right, so let's go take a little bit more look at this. So the database integrity issues that uh, you might have, there's just sort of like technical rules of a specific database or system, you know, foreign key relationships and, and the data typing and, and all those kinds of things I was just talking about. Uh, within there, you have, you know, some you might have rules that are documented in the database, right? So those are depending on what type of, of data structure that you have, and they may be enforced or are not in, enforced. And why do I, I bring this up? Is that um, sometimes you get data quality problems because your database is, um, you know, like a classic example is with a lot of our customers who use the Oracle PeopleSoft ERP, is that the foreign key relationships and certain types of things like that aren't stored at the database level. Instead, they're sort of the application level. So if you're trying to look at the database to figure out what's going on, uh, you're not necessarily going to see a lot of the, the quality constraints or the data constraints. Those are really, to understand that, you have to understand the data entry points, which is where much of those things are enforced. So um, when you have rules that, that are documented in the database, it's relatively straightforward to identify what those things are. Uh, but then you might have things, certain situations where those may be enforced or not. Like maybe it's only enforced upon entry. Uh, it depends on the type of database. Um, we're going to loop back on this on, on like what you should worry about and not worry about. Um, integrity rules that are not known or enforced by the application, that is, um, those are things that are, like I mentioned, that are either, uh, they are enforced by the application or they are um, it's just like undocumented or, 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 you know, just done by policy or, or practice. You know, and maybe what's happening is you have an integration that's loading data that, where that bypasses certain types of enforcements. So you end up with these database integrity issues. Um, but the point at one point of that is that, you know, we're not talking about an actual business process problem here. Like, oh, I can't, 
Um, you know, I don't, I have an employee that has a, an unknown status or something, but it's more like, you know, there's just a problem with the, with the actual database and that may have an actual business logic impact, but it might also just be that, uh, you know, it's affecting the operation of that particular data system. Uh, so the business logic issues are, are sort of the higher level thinking of these things from its functional standpoint, or maybe things that, are, that aren't really just specific database integrity. So general functional rules around business logics or data dependency. Like, you know, if I have, if I'm of this status, I must also have this field. And we, we were talking about an example the other day where we've got student birth dates are required. Right? So if you've got a, like a person demographic table in your database, um, the birthday may not be required in that field because it is not, it's not something that is required for all people. But if you have as part of your policy that if you've got a student, you need to know what their birthday is because that has impacts on certain things that you're trying to do and it's a required field. So um, there's sort of this dependency that if they're of this particular status, then this particular database becomes, this data field becomes uh, needed, right? Or you can get other much more complicated logic. The, the example I love to give another higher ed example is, you know, say anyone that is within one year of their anticipated graduation date uh, cannot have a null or undeclared major, right? That's, an, that's basically saying like, once you get to within a year of graduation, you need to know what you're doing. If not, you've, you've got a problem and you need to get that sorted out for what you're gonna graduate with. And um, so it's not a database problem. It's not really a technical problem. It's a, it's a business problem. Um, but you can tackle that by saying that we've got bad data, you know, or, and the bad data is caused by a policy or business flaw and not a, a technical flaw. Um, so scenario-based integrity, I talked about that, like, you know, student birthday versus general birthday. External validation issues might be um, you've got an address or something where, you know, your, your database system or your, or whatever is not, uh, it doesn't, doesn't have a problem with it, but there, if you were to validate it against an external um, address validation table or something that it's not, it's not a true address, it's not a real address, or your, the code values that you have don't match uh, code values that, that you need some external system. Um, last kind of business logic is a harder one to find, which is that, you know, the information that you have is, is as far as you know, within your organization and within data system accurate, except it turns out that it's actually out of date with reality, right? And some of the ways to track that is just, you've just got stale information, right? That the last time this was updated was 10 years ago and you can't rely on that email address to be valid anymore or the person to be still have the same last name or, or whatever. Um, so that's another sort of issue of, of the um, up-to-dateness and, and um, reality matching nature of your, of your data. Uh, the other type of issue that you have, as I mentioned, the mismatch between systems. So that might be the data is not up-to-date between systems. So either, you know, constituent or transaction info uh, it doesn't match between the two systems, like, you know, two people that don't have the right same contact information, um, if it's the same person or, or, you know, the financial transactions or whatever aren't synchronized, um, or you have reference data code that someone added a status or a, you know, a type or something in one system and it's not in the other one or mapped in a way to the other one. So it just makes those two systems out of sync. Um, the unidentified duplicates are things I talked about that maybe someone got imported into one system and not the other, but, and they're the same person and you don't realize it, or just generally data's not synchronized to the level and frequency and, that, that you want. Um, the last one, as I mentioned, was this perceived data quality issue. So if you have a perceived data quality issue, so that's the, you know, someone's identified uh, a problem, but it hasn't yet been determined what the cause is, um, that you have a real trust issue here. So, so um, it's not any less of an issue than an actual quote unquote data quality problem, right? It's, it's um, it causes the same effect and sometimes even worse. Like if you've got a, an underlying data quality problem with some sort of referential integrity issue that nobody knows about, <laughs> that doesn't really have uh, too much harm on your system, hopefully. Um, but if you've got known issues that are being reported by people or being identified by people, that's, that is a, a challenge. And, it, and the bigger problem actually is if you've got people who are encountering data quality, you know, perceived data quality problems and suffering in silence with it. Uh, so you really wanna celebrate when you learn of a data quality problem and create an, uh, a point of entry, a simple and celebrated and no judging point of entry for people to report data quality problems, things that are stopping them from, from making decisions. Um, 
And when those come in, then treat them as a customer service opportunity to resolve that, that issue. And, and so then you want to say like, well, what's the true cause of this issue? And regardless of what the true cause is, it doesn't undermine the importance of, of it to that person and for, from a customer service standpoint for resolution. So one is it could be this actual quality issue where there's something is wrong, the database integrity issue or a business logic issue or a mismatch between systems, or maybe it's an issue with the report or extract that they're looking at that, that there's some logic problem with that. Or there's an issue with the glossary definition or logic that, you know, the person actually that, um, you know, they're expecting the report to, to count things or calculate things in a certain way based on a certain logic or definition of something. And the report is, is doing it differently and turns out that they're right, you know? So that might need to have a change to that glossary definition. Now, the other flip side of that is that it is a user misunderstanding or a training issue that, that actually there is nothing wrong with the system or the report, but there is something wrong with that person's understanding and training, right? And and so first of all, when you encounter that, because you're thinking of this as a customer service and your goal here is to make sure that they know, know as much as they can, you can perceive it as actually a problem, as, as an issue with training, right? Instead of an issue with them. Uh, and that may be helping them to understand definitional or glossary confusion or clarifying the context of what they're looking at. Like, oh, this is a, this report, if you uh, went to our business glossary discussion uh, that we did, last week, and you can see this in the recorded webinars, I talked a lot about the concept of context around glossary definitions. But in context, it's really important with quality too, because someone might be looking at this, and the time context is like this report is run off of a data system that was updated a week ago instead of today, and that's why it's different. Our scope, meaning that, you know, they're looking at something, um, you know, sort of with a, with a narrow, you know, kind of selection criteria view instead of a broader uh, view, like maybe they're only, maybe looking at active people instead of all people or something like that. Um, or the agency and domain kind of context is that this is this particular report is for a particular branch and not for the whole group, or it's or it's based on numbers for some regulatory report, not our internal numbers. Right? Or maybe just a misunderstanding of how that report works, like what it's doing and what the purpose of that report is, which is sort of a documentation problem. So. Um, those are sort of, the, again, the four kind of issues that you've got, your, your database integrity, business logic, and mismatch between systems, or this sort of perceived issue that might turn out being maybe not a pure data quality thing, but an issue with the report or an issue with the definition or uh, a training issue with, for, the, for the person. All of which, though, represent um, loss of trust and